happened today that brought you here on your path and we are so excited that it did y'all we have a special guest in the building Raven Simone Pharrell y'all clap it up clap it up clap it up clap it up I mean it was a great day for your path to lead you here and as we talk about like what brought you from Ohio to Atlanta to LA uh -huh. I need to know more about that <laughs> Okay, so um, yeah, I'm from Ohio, and I actually moved to Atlanta to attend college. I wanted to go to SCAD um, to attend the College of Art and Design, mm -hmm. and I got accepted, but I just couldn't afford it. Yeah. Um, so literally, like when I moved to Atlanta, I moved to Kennesaw, and Kennesaw State University was like down the street. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, cool, let me go to this college. And um, I was at Kennesaw um, for like for three and a half, four years. Yeah. Um, but then while I was there, like I started taking like workshops and everything in Atlanta and I started getting more into the television and film industry. You know, it's so crazy. I actually uh, didn't plan on becoming an actress. I was actually going for the um, for like the production side. Gotcha. Um, but then like when I'm when I was like started taking like classes, like uh, just like I was taking classes everywhere. I'm not going to lie to y'all. <laughs> um, I started falling in love, in love more with acting. Now I did theater. Um, I just didn't think that it was going to be my career path. Uh, gotcha. But then once I started attending classes, I'm like, okay, this is my love. Yeah. Like, I would do this for free. Yeah. And so I need, to, like, I need to do it as a profession. Absolutely. So what was that moment where you knew college may not have been the space for you and you wanted to pivot on your path? Um, I kind of always knew. Okay. So I went to college just because, like, I was peer pressured. Um, not in a bad way, but just because like my two older sisters, like they were like college graduates. They were the first two to graduate my entire family. So I'm like, I'm the next up. So I felt like I had to go. Yeah. Um, also, when I spoke to my sister about me wanting to uh, um, pursue the entertainment industry, she was kind of hesitant about it. And um, it made me kind of scared. <laughs> I'm like, oh snap, let me go ahead and do this real quick. Um, but I think my breaking point was when it really started to affect me and like me, like actually like reaching like my dreams. Um, there was a time to where I was, I was really close to getting a role in the production. And um, I was training for it uh, and classes was actually interfering with it. I, uh, I ended up not getting it. And I started to question if I should still act and and the moment I called one of my close friends and I'm just like, yo, like, I don't think this is the path for, path for me. I need to start taking school more serious and this yeah. and the third. He's like, no, nah, you're talking crazy. And literally there was a flight to L.A. for $35. $35? $35. It was Frontier. <laughs> but still, $35. It was, it was, it was Frontier. <laughs> um, but like, uh, so yeah, I, I literally just bought the flight and I moved out here like without a plan. Yeah. Like I just, I just had like a lot of faith, and I knew that like it's something that I really love and I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. um, this had more opportunity here in LA, so I was like, Gotta "It's do time it. for me. It's time for me." What was that conversation like with your family? Because a lot of times when we're figuring out our passions and, and you know getting to know more about what is driving us, how did you how did you start that conversation with your family to get that you know get them? I don't want to say on your side, but if yeah. it's different than what they expected. Yeah, kind of to persuade them more. So yeah. my mom, my mom has always been like my number one supporter. Yeah. Like from jump. Like my mom was always like, oh my God. We leaving, like, we yeah, going, yeah, we going. Yeah, yeah, like she's like, she was always for it. Um, but with my sisters, I think it was so, I think it was harder when I first got into it. Because by the time I went to LA, I had already been in a few projects. Okay. So they knew that it was like a thing and they knew that it was possible. So it wasn't really a thing when I moved to LA. Yeah. And I was already away from the family because they were all, they were still in Ohio. Yeah. Um, so at that point it's like, okay, cool. Like we see this moving for you, go ahead and do it. It was more so to move to Atlanta that was scarier than LA. LA was a breeze. Gotcha. LA, moving to Atlanta was, I cried the entire time. It was crazy. Oh my, you cried. I cried the entire time, no lie. <laughs> Only because it was like, I was 17. Yeah. And it's like, I'm, I'm leaving my family. And like my mom, I have, I have five siblings. Yeah. I grew up in a house with, with, with five, other, five other siblings. So 
you know, I'm just used to being in, with a big family and just, I don't know, we just always there for each other and stuff like that. So like, when I knew that I was gonna be more myself, it was kinda, it was surreal, surreal when I actually moved. Yeah. Cause even when I said it, I'm like, okay, cool, cool, cool. But when I actually like, I was like, oh snap, like, what am I doing? I don't even know if this is like the right move, but it ended up being right. <laughs> it was God. the right pivot. Thank God. It was, the, <laughs> it was the right pivot. So you talked about how experiencing that, I don't wanna say rejection, but just not booking the job that you wanted to book kind of mm -hmm. had you go through a period of time where you started to doubt yourself. Yeah. What were some of the affirmations that you said to yourself? Cause I know you said you called your friend and mm -hmm. like that person affirmed you in, in, that, in that space. What were some of the affirmations you told yourself? I think, you know what's so crazy? Like back then it was yeah. definitely like my tribe, right? Yeah. That like gave me that assurance that, you know, and even like sometimes like when you get callbacks and like you get close, it's like, we still have to sit back and remember that that's still a thing. Like, you know, yeah. you still got far, even though you didn't book, like it's still like, it's hundreds of people who went out for your role. Yeah. Um, but I think lately, um, honestly, within these past two or three years, I'm starting to like really find happiness without needing that validation from acting. Yeah. Um, and you just have to find what your hobbies are. Like find what, find find a hobby that you're able to do that you don't expect anything back from it. Um, mm. That'll keep you happy. That's powerful. Um, so then like you won't have like, like yeah, put your all into it of course, but like your whole personal life won't be into it as well. Cause like for a long time, it was like career, personal, everything is this, Yeah. you know? And then when I actually started to separate it, I'm like, okay, this is just like, this is a career that I'm trying to pursue. And that's just it. Like, I'm going to take it. I'm going to leave it. Like, it is what it is. Like, yeah. and started actually dibbling and dabbling in other things. That's when I became, like, happier. And I'm okay with getting rejected. Because yeah. it's not my everything. Yeah. You know? So what's that go-to hobby for you? Um, I, I like to do a lot. So, um, like, in, in what aspect? Because, like, you know, I, um, I play the violin. Okay, okay. I play the violin. I like to, um, I like to exercise. I like to work out. I just started getting to working out. Um, I like hanging out with friends. I like to try new restaurants. I love to eat a lot. I love food. Like, I'm always down to try a different restaurant. Um, but I think also when I was in Atlanta, I didn't really have like um, a really close knit friend group. I think I was very much of an introvert. Yeah. Once I moved to LA, I actually started like opening it up more. And that has allowed me to like experience new things and like get my mind off certain things because I'm able to go out and have fun yeah. or able to just like, I'm having a day just to go up to my friend's house, drink wine, like, you know, just chill and stuff like that. Like, um, I just, I don't know. I just, I'm just open to a lot more things now. Yeah. So when you came across the coast, right? Uh -huh. $35, you get here. Uh -huh. I think I heard you mention a hostel. I was in a what's, hostel, y'all. situation? No lie. I didn't like, y'all, like I said, I had no plan. I had, I didn't know what I was doing. It wasn't until like, um, my Southeast rep actually got me with an LA rep and I actually signed with, I ended up signing with the LA rep. And um, I was like, oh snap, I gotta stay. Like, <laughs> so I was like, I gotta figure out a way. Um, so I was in a hostel, I've been in a hostel for a minute, no lie. Um, and then like, once I actually started booking again, like I actually, well, I was able to get my own apartment, but it was definitely a struggle. Yeah. Um, and that's what I mean by like the, import um, the importance of having your own tribe because I had friends who like, understood what I was going through. Yeah. And like, we literally like, we would, one of my friends, like, you know, he hated where he was staying too. Like, we, so we would be out all day <laughs> until it was time to go to sleep. We was be up walking and doing hikes or yeah. like, we, we have this thing to where we used to get donuts and sit at the laundry mat, like stuff like that. Yeah. So right now to this day, I, like, I value those moments. But I mean, it's, you just gotta do what you gotta do until you ain't gotta do it no more. <laughs> <laughs> That's just what it is. That's just what it is. <laughs> Thinking about some of the movies you were in, Stolen by My Mother, the Bobby Brown, so like what set experience or uh, what gig would you say was the most impactful for you? Oh, most impactful. Can I ask you in what way? Like, like work-wise or like, yeah. like friend, like? I would say impactful from the, from the standpoint of, I learned the most in that okay. space. So which set really taught you the most? Which production taught you? So learn the most was definitely Stolen by My Mother. Okay. Yeah, I mean that was, who it was. It was a lot, um, especially because of that first week. The first week and a half was all like emotional scenes, yeah. and then like I'm at work, like literally like sun up to sundown. Like, yeah. how I mean, when I tell you that 
you know, you obviously you have your off days, but like, you know how some people get off days <laughs> during the week, like when everybody else is still filming. I never had an off day. Yeah. So like literally like just learning how to um, connect the scenes very, very quickly, um, mm -hmm. learning how to get tap into that motion quickly to where it feels real. Yeah. Um, learning to like be like be okay to speak up. Like being okay with like saying like, okay, you know what? Like, you know, I'm not ready. Like I need my mom. Like I need, you know, yeah. just like, you know, yeah, respectfully, like obviously. Um, but, and also just like learning how to like work with other people's, um, every, I feel like a lot of us had our own different kind of working style. Yeah. Um, and learning how like to adapt to that and like, you know, bring it all together and, and work together with that. Yeah. Um, but I think just in general, having that workload of, like I said, all day, every day and like, you know, just keeping up with the pace. Yeah. Even like when you, when you, even the weekends when you're like, oh, I got days off. No, it's not days off. It's, it's not like yeah. you gotta, yeah. you gotta go over those scenes that you got on, on, on Tuesday. Like, you know, Absolutely. Um, so it's, it's really taking time management and taking advantage of that time that you got. Uh, I'm even something as simple as a, as a bath. It was like <laughs> a luxury, like, oh, I get to sit here and I can like be here for like an hour. Yeah. And take a um, moment. Exactly. So what goes into the preparation for Rose? Um, with me, it was, it kind of, I mean, I guess it really don't, don't depend, but like, so with me personally, I actually like, I like to break down my scenes. Um, okay. I like to memorize, but I memorize in a very like monotone way. Okay. So they all like, so it don't seem like rehearsed. Okay. Um, and then I like to like really, I'm more on like my backstory and my emotions so that I'm able to like feel it more. Yeah. Um, versus like learning the lines. I mean, of course, like I want to learn the lines, but it's like that's not the most important thing to me. Yeah. Um, so uh, it's all about just figuring out those ways to where like where I'm able to connect. So if that's for me, um, for the most part, it's substitution. So like I figure out like, OK, what emotion am I feeling? OK, where like what what relationship do I have with who um, to where it's a similar emotion or like, you know, uh, what uh, what just the emotion, the person, like just, just everything. It's just really about finding out like where I'm coming from. And then I'm able to like do what I'm supposed to do when the time comes. Yeah. What was the class that really taught you those techniques, right? Um, that really exposed you to the different methods of substitution, like knowing to do that as a, you know, a young actress when somebody's starting out, they may not know or yeah. have that awareness. Um, for me, it was, it was uh, Ivana Shubbett. Um, I took, I actually came out here before I moved here. Yep. I came out here for like three months um, and I and just to take her class. And then when I moved here, I took her class for uh, for a minute. Um, and she also has a book called Power of an Actor yep. uh, to where it breaks down like just like the different steps of like breaking mm -hmm. down a strip, yep. um, obstacles, like uh, mo like just moments and like it, it just breaks down everything. To, to, to this day, I still if I'm in a mind block, like mm -hmm. I still go back and I'm like, OK, it helps me like get out of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. How'd you find out about the class, the Ivana Chubb class? Whoa. <laughs> Yo, I don't even, I don't even, I can't even remember how I found out about Ivana. Um, yeah, I just, oh, I don't know. I just know that at someone, I can't remember who, but someone recommended me the book. Okay. And I know for sure I read the book. Yep. And then I was like, oh, snap, like, I have to go to this class. So when that summer came around, me and my friend, we came out here and we were like taking our class. Yeah. Um, but I can't remember the exact person who told me. Mm. So, so you mentioned having that tribe, that village that mm -hmm. keeps you grounded mm -hmm. and in a way like reminds you of who you are, mm -hmm. right? And that fuel, but also the importance of having it within yourself mm -hmm. and being able to fuel yourself, mm -hmm. right? And knowing who you are. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me about a time where you had to literally like pull together whatever you had to pull together a emotional role, but you didn't have necessarily a situation to pull from. So it's almost like you had to create it. Or are there any examples of, of that happening? I feel like even if it's not the same exact situation, I'm always yeah. able to relate to an emotion. Okay. So like say for instance, if it's a scene to where like, I'm trying to find, I'm trying to get my, uh, partner to love me, right? Yeah. And it's like, well, you know, I, I don't feel that, right? But it's like, okay, mm -hmm. now I'm like, when has, when was the time I, I've ever needed somebody to love me? Okay, I go back to my dad, right? So it's like, it's like, it's just, I, I'm always able, even though it's not the same exact thing, I'm always able to connect. Mm -hmm. um, I know specifically there was this thing for stolen by my mother uh, when her mom went to jail 
and like my mom, like my mom's just not about that life, you know? Yeah. So like, <laughs> so like I couldn't even imagine her going to jail, but like, like I said, she's like my number one supporter. And um, I just had to imagine like a time, like, cause the, I mean, at the end of the day, that feeling was yeah. the person who's been here for me all day, every day, like my love, like the only person that really knows me mm. or who I know is not going to be in my life for the rest of my, for the next 20 whatever years, right? Yeah. So in my mind, it's like, okay, that's my mom for me, right? So I have to imagine, you know, um, God forbid, but I like, I, during that, <laughs> during that time, um, I like, imagine if something was to happen, like, if she was like sick and she knew like her time was coming. Yeah. God forbid, this is so sick, I'm so sorry. Um, but like, um, it's like, I know she would be that kind of person to tell me, like, uh, you know, keep going. You yeah. know, and it's like, absolutely. What do you mean keep going? This, this don't even mean anything. Like, this is this, you know? Mm-hmm. And I think that's what that scene was for her. So, like, we literally did that. One. Like, I think we, I think we had to do a, a safety tape, but we literally did like two tapes. What is a safety tape? Oh, um, um, so it's like uh, when you get a takedown, and then like you just do another one just to see if anything else happens, um, or just to like fix like any like minor things. Uh, but yeah, with that, like that specific scene is like, yeah. okay, I was able to, even though it wasn't the same situation, I was able to connect. Yeah. Emotionally. Wow. So yeah. I'm curious, right? When you are deciding to take a pause, right? Mm-hmm. And when I say a pause, it may just be a moment to gather yourself, collect yourself, right? Cause you're playing these roles and you're playing characters, but you're pulling from real experiences. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times that warrants a moment of pause. Mm-hmm. Um, how do you, how do you communicate that on set? Like, how do you say, hey, I need a moment? Like, do you just say, hey, I need a moment or? Yeah, so I, I often, um, I say something like way before. Okay. Like as soon as I'm getting on, like if I know what we're about to shoot. Yeah. Like I'm letting that be known. Like when I, when, whenever I arrive. Who do you say that to? To, to the PA. And I, some, a lot of times, like I talk to, I mean, most of, all the time I talk to the director. And the PA um, is the production, production assistant. assistant. Yes, it's production assistant. Um, and to the director and, you know, maybe sometimes I'll be a producer, but you just kind of have to let them know. Like, and then I have, I have, I have, I have to listen to music. Okay. So like I listen to gospel a lot. Okay. So like um, what's on the playlist? So, First song. Um, with hold or nothing. Okay. Hey. <laughs> hey. <laughs> yeah. You better. Right. That's like my go-to. <laughs> That's my go-to. Um, but like if I if I if I have a like a scene to where I need I need a moment. Yeah. Um, and I say you know I'm because I, because I don't want it to come off as rude because I have my headphones in mm. and it's like just FYI like this is just you know I'm not trying to like come off as rude like. Mm. I need these. I need these in my ear. To get in and, his own. Um, please, like, if yeah. just limit the conversation if you could. Got gotcha. you. know. Got gotcha. you. Um, but that's yeah. That's what's needed for me personally. Yeah. We talked about a self tape that might have been taped in Miami <laughs> while on a girls trip. I, I'm curious, like, when you don't get something right, uh-huh. but. God has this great way about when you're on your path, uh-huh. things come in full circle. Uh-huh. So you don't get a gig and then you're called back within, you know, that next year by uh-huh. that same casting director um, and writer. How do you, I don't know, how do you process like, hey, this was a no this time, like now I want to go back? I'm not going to lie. I think I had to experience that in order to know. Okay. Like once I experienced it, that's when that, that's that's how I'm able to let things go. Yeah. Cause like even going back to the role that um that I that I didn't get, which caused me to move to LA, that yeah. was the very role um that got me stolen by my mother a year later. Mm-hmm. Um, once I talked to the, cause I, <laughs> I was it's actually cool, full circle, right, right, right. So um I was actually in Miami on a girls trip, and um and I I got the audition. And mind you, the audition was like no no lie. The audition was like 14 pages. And then I know, I know I'm in Miami on a girl's trip. So it's yeah. like, I, I know that this is like, so <laughs> it's probably like not gonna be my best work. So, um, <laughs> so like when I, when I first see it, I'm like, yeah, you know what? And I seen like, I seen like who the producers were and I just knew like how like, yo, I'm not even gonna lie. I, I got my closure once I actually booked combined. <laughs> but like, um, I actually, I actually turned it down. I turned it down. Yeah. Um, and then uh, my team got back to me and they were just like, you know, like, just do it. Like they, they, they got back to me the next day. They were just like, just, just, just get it on tape. They're trying to, they're trying to figure it out about a week, over the weekend, this and the third. And I'm like, okay, cool. But again, being irresponsible on a girl's trip. Um, 
I didn't do it. And um, <laughs> that Monday rolled around, and the same casting director actually um, reached out to me on Instagram. And she DM'd me, like, what's going on? Like, I, you know, I tried to do this tape for you, do this in third. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I was like, oh, snap. Like, I got to get this done. So, like, I literally, like, I called a friend who, who was from Ohio, from Cincinnati, and um, he had um, got me in contact with one of his friends who weren't actors at all. <laughs> um, again, the tape was crazy uh, bad. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> it, was, it was ridiculous. Um, but once I turned it in, uh, she actually called me. And then, like, and she let me know. And she's like, yeah, she was like, um, you know, once I got this breakdown, she had already alerted my team before mm. they even, this is months before, um, about the project. Yep. Um, and it's like, like, and she, and they're like, yeah, I know the perfect person, the person for this role. They're like, the girl who came close last year for that project. Yeah. Right. And I'm not even knowing. And I think my team didn't tell me at first because it's like, they didn't want me to get in my head about it. Yep. Um, and me not knowing and just being like, literally like just irresponsible and just, Ignorant, honestly. Um, I, I wasn't, I wasn't one hundred percent in. But when she said that, I'm like, well, yo, like, what's meant for you is meant for you, and it's gonna come to you regardless. Yeah. And sometimes you just honestly don't know that, like, you know, this is literally setting you up for something bigger. Because honestly, mm -hmm. like, that was just, it was a bigger, um, it was a bigger opportunity for me. Yeah. And I'm, I'm glad that, like, <laughs> that it did go that that direction. But I didn't know until I knew. Yeah. Um, but now I'm more aware of that, and I'm like. You know, whenever I lose out on a role, I'm just like, okay, that wasn't for me, but it's gonna come back around some way, somehow. Yeah. You know, maybe it's the same director, maybe the same cast director, maybe the same, you know, you just never know, so you always gotta put in your, your best. Every time. Every I, time, because you just never know who's watching. So, that was great, yes. <laughs> for someone who's, what are like five actionable steps for somebody who is a young actress or young student, young girl, she's looking to become an actress? She's in Ohio right now. Mm -hmm. Like everybody in her family done went to college. Well, not everybody in her family has went to college, but her two older siblings done went to college. There's this mm -hmm. legacy kind of being laid out. What would you say are those five actionable steps that she should take as somebody looking to be an actress? Um, and if you could say it directly to her, because I know she watches. Oh, hey, girl. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, I would say one, um, educate yourself. Educate yourself all the way around on the business. Yep. Um, on your craft, like just always, there's always room to learn more, always room to improve at all times. I don't care where you are. Like, you know, of course, like there's more to learn as you get old, like as you're, um, when you're beginning, but just always keep that on the forefront. Um, I say number two, um, learn how to, um, network, like literally do workshops. Literally, I got my first audition with Tyler Perry. I had no, no, um, no representation. And that's just for me going to workshops all the time. Yeah. So the same for the yeah. same casting director. Um, um, I would say number three is, you know, get your reels, get your headshots and everything together. Uh, make sure that they're always on point. They're, they're always representing you at, with how you are and how you look at the time. Um, number four, I would say literally know yourself and um, know that you are enough and know that like, you know, this industry is 99% rejection, 1% 1% acceptance, and you have to know that like, no, you have to learn to validate yourself versus letting everybody or work or a book and validate you because you don't get it often. Um, mm. And number five, I would say, um, just have fun and be yourself because a lot of the times um, you don't even realize it, but when people book roles, it's because a part of them is in that role. And we try to be whoever that we think we, the casting directors want us to be, when no, what makes you unique is that nobody in that room is gonna come in like how you are, yeah. or come in with your yeah. personality. That's the only thing that will hey. let you stand out. Hey. Yeah, 100%. So I wanna make sure I open up the floor to the audience for some questions. So I'm asking this question on behalf of a shy young audience member. Uh -huh. He would like to know, how do you get over being shy to pursue your dreams, as, especially as a, as a preteen or a teenager, and you want to be great or you want to be an actor or pursue it professionally, but you want to get over your internal shyness that a lot of us had as children. What advice would you give to that young man? I think, I think um, just, 
overly, excuse me, overly training and practicing in your craft because mm -hmm. that confidence will allow you not to be shy. It will, it will, it will help with your shyness. Mm -hmm. When you walk in a room and you know what you can give and you know what you can perform and you know that like you are what they're looking for, you don't really care about what nobody else thinks. So it's all about just like working on that confidence. Mm -hmm. And confidence takes, you know, is obviously just about training. And, and as a child, what or where would you point them in the right direction to constantly train and work on their craft so that break out of their shyness and and get into that confidence? Um, classes, uh, improv. Improv, really? improv That's classes. amazing. Yes. Do you have any you recommend? Um, well, in what part? Was any, anywhere. Any, oh, any, like because you know what the pandemic did was even the playing field. So you can train anywhere on the planet if you got Wi-Fi That's and a laptop. So, I know. Go ahead, go ahead. I know. Um, me personally, like, what really helped my improv in Atlanta was uh, was Drama Inc. Drama Inc. Yes. Oh, it's okay. I am not aware, but uh, <laughs> uh, we'll circle back. Yeah, we'll, we'll circle back. Uh, but it, Drama Inc. Yes, they 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 helped me with that a lot. But if not, you'd recommend just finding local reputable improv yeah, yeah, classes improv in your classes, city. Yes. yes. Thank you so much, Raven. I appreciate it. No problem. Okay, so you mentioned being able to connect emotionally with your roles. Have you ever had a time where your emotions caused a conflict with performing a role, and how did you overcome it? Yes, yes, I did. Um, that's what got me into therapy. <laughs> no, um, there was a, a particular project I, I actually didn't book. Um, but it just, uh, um, I tapped into like, uh, um, the issues that I have with my, with my, with my biological father. And, um, I didn't realize how much it affected me. Cause you know how, like, as you get older, like you feel like certain things don't affect you. Yep. Um, and then like, once I actually like broke things down, I was like, connected, like, I realized how much it really did. Um, and it honest, it, it really took a toll on me. Um, I realized that when I was like, um, kind of acting out on my partner at the time over just like small things just because I was just so like irritated with myself and irritated of like just those thoughts that I was having. Um, but that's what introduced me to therapy. That's what literally I got into, that was the first time I ever got into therapy and I was able to work that out. But, but it helped me though, because it's like, again, I didn't realize that it was something that really affected me. Thank you so much for saying that. Of course. Um, the second part of my question would be, um, do you think moving forward, like, can you foresee any roles that you could not want to do because of any emotional triggers? Or is there a role that you really want to play to express some of the emotions that you haven't expressed? Oh, that's crazy. Um, it's actually, I'm having that battle right now with my next project. It's like, um, I thought it was something, something that I wanted to um, tap into. Um, cause I, when I read it, I knew I could relate to it. Um, but actually like going through it and like breaking it down and everything now, like I'm realizing it's a lot. Um, I have to take some time off from it sometimes. Thank God I have a lot of time before we start, um, actually filming. Um, but it's, it's part of the work, you know? I mean, that's what we, that's what we sacrifice. That's what we get. That's our job. You know, we give that to like, that's what helps other people connect. And hopefully, you know, when someone watches that, the, you know, this film, they're able to say, well, wow, like, I'm glad she did that because that actually helped me as well. Um, but I think I kind of, I think I be, I, I'm so, I'm so, like, for me connecting to personal experiences that I didn't realize that certain things were too soon. Um, and at this time, I realized, okay, it was too soon. I should have gave it some time. Um, but I... What also helps me though, like, cause it was, it was, it honestly, like, it relates to my, my stepfather recently passing, but, um, I think about him too though, like, he, like, he, he, he would want me to do it. Um, and I know that I'm making him proud, so it, it's one of those things that just, like, it helped. I'm maneuvering through it, but it, it, it helped me for sure. You just gotta find your own personal ways to, like, you know, get through it. Yeah. You mentioned you're a team a lot, and I'm curious. So I've heard, you know, representation, uh -huh. having a therapist. Uh -huh. Who else is comprised of that team? <laughs> um, my therapist, uh, my, my, my agent, my manager, uh -huh. uh, my mom, 
Um, my siblings, to an extent, but they don't really understand me like that, you know? I mean, like, they, they get me, but they, they don't really get, like, the industry. So they don't really get, like, I feel like my mom understands more because, like, she's with me, like, 24-7. Or I'm talking on the phone before I was with her physically. But, like, um, I would talk on the phone with her all the time. So she kind of understands everything more. Yeah. Um, and then, like, man, my brothers, like, not, not my blood brothers, but, like, my brothers, like, in the acting world, like, yeah. Who they're also in the industry and they and they uh they get me that's you know um but yeah I mean as far as like my daily my like my daily tribe I think it's, it's I think it's those people yeah. but I think it's also it's so important to I'm telling you it's so important to find people who actually understand you and going through the same things that y'all are going through because yeah. yo sometimes you are down sometimes they are down but like y'all are always okay because like y'all are there and y'all are the only people who really understand each other because y'all going through the same path. Like even when I wasn't yeah. like when I was um when I wasn't really booking as much, like me seeing my my like my my friend group, my tribe, like yeah. book and like just be great, I'd be like, I know it's possible. Cause they going they went through the same thing I would do and now they they sit here being great. Like, you know? Yep. It's like mad inspiring. So it's like on both ends, like it's super important. I don't I mean honestly, I I I can't even say that like my career would have been as smooth. Uh, well, not smooth. Let me not say that. But like, <laughs> <laughs> but it wouldn't have it wouldn't have have like gotten this far without them. Like, it's 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 super important. Yeah. I think it's like the most important thing. Shout honestly. out to the gang. Shout out to the gang. <laughs> Shout out to the gang. <laughs> so when you're going out for an audition, right? Say there's a role and it requires you to learn a new skill that you don't currently have. <laughs> Can you speak to that? What are some of the steps that you take to become familiar with certain techniques? Cause yeah. you know, I heard you got a jump shot. Yeah, I, I just love. wanna know. You know, I just played one-on-one on one with LeBron yesterday. Beat him. It was like 21. But yeah, yeah, he got, he got like, okay, like 22. Okay, yeah, he got okay. Like two. He got two points, I had 20. We need to know more. Say no, I'm kidding. We need to know more. You know, when I think about basketball, I'm like, <laughs> Okay, you gotta be here. I'm like, okay. You know, and if that happened on your path. No, I, know. I think, I mean, you gotta be honest with you. I mean, I, 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 we all say that we can do everything. I mean, of course, but yep. like, you also gotta be honest with yourself and like know that you, and also know the time frame. Do yep. you have time to learn the skill? Is it learnable? <laughs> you know, cause there's been times to where um, I'm like, okay, you know, I can't sing, but I'm still, uh, I'm still trying and then I sing in front of them, they're like, no. You know, um, <laughs> but when it comes down to something like, you know, a sport, like right now, um, I'm worried, uh, I, I have to, I'm a basketball player. I'm on a basketball team in one, in one of my next projects. So uh, I've been basketball training every day, you know, but it's, it's like we don't start filming that until November, till late November. You know, I end up booking that like three weeks ago. So every day, I, I, don't, I, yeah. I take advantage of it every day. <laughs> Thank you. But like, I'm in a gym, like, cause I, cause I didn't know. I'm not a basketball player. That's what but, I, but like, you play. Yeah, I'm not, a, I'm not a basketball player, but I'm, I like, you know, I know when I want something, and if I work hard, I'ma get it. Yep. So it's like, I know that, like, I wanted that role, and um, and I know I had time, so you know, I just, I just gotta get to it every morning. Every morning, I'm there. I'm in the gym. So how often are you in the gym? Every day. Well, well I'm in the, so, so when it comes down to personal training, so I personally train five days a week. So I personally train from Monday through Friday, okay. but I do basketball training seven days a week. So literally day, seven days a week, every morning. Yeah. Every day. Every yeah, one hundred percent. So I have to get up. I have to get up at. Um, I get up at six. My uh, my my trainer, like as far as just like personal training, is um, near LAX. Okay. Um, uh, and um, so I have to leave the house. I live in North Hollywood, so I have to leave, and um, at seven, be there by eight. Yeah. I train with him till probably about nine thirty, ten o'clock. Then I leave there, and then I go straight to basketball practice. Who gives you a, a trainer? I guess or somebody who helps you develop like the skill of basketball? Do you have to go out and find that yourself? So, I mean, it just depends. I mean, like, I, I think that when it's something that, you know, that like, has like a, like a, you know, like they really, really want you to master that skill. Like, I think they'll get it for you. But me okay. personally, I'm just doing it myself. Okay. I'm just that, yeah, it's, it wasn't mandatory, but you know, I don't, I don't want to look bad out here. So did you go to like a friend <laughs> that played basketball and was like, hey. So, so, I, so surprisingly I had two, so one of my friends, one of my close friends actually is really close friends with someone who coaches basketball. Okay, okay. So, um, so he trains me three days out the week and then there's, a, there's actually um, someone who actually train like she, she plays, like she, she for real, she I ball. forgot what league she's in, forgive me. Um, but uh, she, yeah, she plays, so like, um, one of my other friends had got me with her, 
Yep. And then, so it was really just, I guess, friends, you know, just connecting me with people. Yep. Um, and then like, yeah, so she's, so they both just. It's always good when you had an introduction. Exactly. Right, because I mean, a lot of times you do got to reach out to people cold because they exactly. don't know who you are. Yeah, and but I would, yeah. When you have that introduction, because yeah. you've done and laid the groundwork, right, yeah. with your work. Mm -hmm. It makes the connecting points even easier. Yeah, one hundred percent. But also, yeah. if if I didn't know anybody, like you just if you want something, like don't be scared. Close mouth don't get fed. So you gotta just go ahead and ask them. <laughs> and just you like. I mean, eventually somebody's gonna say yes. I mean, like yeah, like and nobody says no. Like if you're if you're trying to like pay and stuff like that, mm -hmm. like it's like you are gonna find somebody. Speaking of what's happening now and next, what's one person you wanna work with next that you haven't had the opportunity to work with? Bring her here. <laughs> Bring her here. So bad. So bad. And even if it was even if it was just like her directing me in a project. Yeah. I just wouldn't work with that woman so bad. Like really, really bad. Well, you know, here in past, we believe in like prophecy. Yes, yes. I need everybody speak so that with me. <laughs> speak that. Speak that. Regina King, 100 percent Raven. Thank you so much for giving, Thank you, like being here, telling us your journey. Your Thank you for having me. It up. It up. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, Thank you. just really being yourself and being transparent about the path. Yeah. People do not know when to pivot, when to pause, when to yeah. push forward and just yeah. be like, hey, it is what it is. I'm in Miami. We're going to figure this thing yeah. out. <laughs> Period. So thank yeah. you so much, y'all. Thank you. And if you're sitting there in Ohio and you're that young student looking to be an actress, I mean, I hope that when you leave this this episode, you leave more full and you leave more fueled to step into your path. Y'all, thank you so much thank for having you. us. That's a wrap.